to see on this beautiful May's morning. Uh, special day for music, a special day in a lot of different ways. That's the last time the Emmanuel Bells will play till I guess the fall. Winding up different things this time of the year. We are continuing our Thursday evening worship services. A reminder about that, take, they take place at 7.30 and will take place at 7.30 until into November. We are also, we had to miss a couple of weeks with Bible study, but we're back on Bible study this coming Thursday at 9 o'clock a.m. We, the elevator is uh, approved and it just needs the certificate sent in by the state, so otherwise it's ready to go. And hopefully, we're hoping to get those papers in this week, but we don't know that for a fact. So we'll try to let you know as soon as we can about that. But the bathrooms are operable downstairs, and they look great. The entrance way, you can come in the new entrance. Uh, feel free to do that now. And everything. Anything else? We also have new candles, and we want to dedicate those candles this morning. These are um, the... Uh, liquid candles. They have the liquid inside of them instead of the wax, and you didn't even know that, probably. A lot of you didn't. But we had some uh, some memorial money that was dedicated to those candles, and we want to make sure that we, uh, we dedicate the candles this morning. And apart from these two candles, we also have uh, new candelabra oil candles, and we are dedicating those as well. They have been given in loving memory of Arnold and Leota Schutte, and Tony Schutte and Chuck Ray by uh, Gertrude Schutte and Ruth Ann Gray, who are over in that direction. Wave your hand so they know where you are. So let's have that dedication at this point. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe. You have enriched our lives with every good and perfect gift. You have commanded us to show your splendor to our children and praise you with lives of love justice, and joy. Accept these candles, which we offer in thanksgiving. May they be to us a sign of Christ, the light of the world, the light no darkness can ever overcome. Bring us at length to your perfect kingdom, where you live and reign with your Son and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. I now declare and dedicate the name of the Father, Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Will the congregation please arise? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who calls us beloved children, who gathers us into one flock, who guides us into all truth. Let us confess our sins, trusting that God will forgive us, cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Faithful and just God, we confess that we are captive to doubt and fear, bound by the ways that lead to death. We have not loved our sisters and brothers as you first loved us. Forgive us, God of mercy. In this is love, not that we love God, but that God loved us and sent the Son to atone for our sins. In the name of Jesus Christ, I announce to you that your sins are forgiven. Let the perfect love of God cast out fear, fill you with joy, and inspire you to live for others.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who are gather here for worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Form the minds of your faithful people into a single will. Make us love what you command and desire what you promise. That amid all the changes of this world, our hearts may be fixed where true joy is found. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
for this morning comes from the book of Acts. Then an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Get up and go toward the south, to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a wilderness road. So he got up and went. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of the Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship, and was returning home, seated in his chariot. He was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, Go over to this chariot and join it. So Philip ran up to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. He asked, Do you understand what you are reading? He replied, How can I, unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this. Like a sheep he was led to the slaughter, and like a lamb silent before its shearer, so he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, About whom, may I ask you, does the prophet say this, about himself or about someone else? Then Philip began to speak, and starting with this scripture, he proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. As they were going along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look! Here is water. What is to pre prevent me from being baptized? He commanded the chariot to stop, and both of them, Philip and the eunuch, went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch saw him no more, and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself as at Azotus, and as he was passing through the region, he proclaimed the good news to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today I will read Psalm 22 by whole verse. My praise is of him in the great assembly. I will perform my vows in the presence of those who worship him. shall remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations bow before him. To him alone all who sleep in the earth bow down and worship. All who go down into the dust fall before him. shall come and make known to a people yet unborn the saving deeds that he has done. The second reading for this morning is from the first book of John. Beloved, let us love one another, because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us and his love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us, because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father has sent his Son as the Savior of the world. God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the Son of God, and they abide in God. So we have known and believe the love that God has for us. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Love has been perfected among us in this way, that we may have boldness on the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not reached perfection in love. We love because he first loved us. Those who say, I love God, and hate their brothers or sisters are liars. For those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen, 
cannot love God whom they have not seen. The commandment we have from him is this, those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. The word of the Lord. John recorded in the 15th chapter. I am the true vine. My father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. The Gospel of our Lord. Silly putty that we can do, and we don't even know that we can do the silly different kind. 
kinds of things, like make a tree. Isn't that nice? Sort of a tree. Looks like the tree outside of Rupert's house. I mean, it looks very much like that. You can do all sorts of incredible things. If just we just remember that Jesus is always in us and we're in him. Just like waiting for us inside the chili place. Just waiting for us to find out all the different things that we do. Isn't that cool? So remember to abide in him, and we're all going to do great. Make sure you get a bulletin, okay, you guys? And we'll see you next week. Special music from our after school club, <coughs> winding up things at the end of our church year, anyway. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father, our Lord, and our Savior, Jesus Christ. There was a man who went to the zoo, and he was absolutely amazed that at the zoo there was a lion who was laying there, and a lamb was right next to the lion. Very calm, very peaceful, laying next to each other. And there was a zookeeper nearby. He asked him, how in the world can you make something like that happen? And the zookeeper said, it's easy. You just put in a new lamb every day. <laughs> you don't remain in one place forever. We're here for a while, then we're there. Then we're here, then we're there. Sometimes we abide in Jesus. Sometimes we do not abide in Jesus even though he always abides in us. Abide in me as I in you, Jesus says. I watched the movie Philadelphia again uh, the other night. I don't know if you've ever seen that film about a uh, man who has AIDS. He's a lawyer and he gets fired from his law firm because they find out that he has AIDS. And um, 
He sues then the law firm because he felt he was unjustly fired. In this one scene, his lawyer is talking to the judge and he's telling the judge that uh, the country is still very racist in different ways. The judge then says this, in this courtroom, justice is blind to matters of race, creed, color, religion, and sexual orientation. And his lawyer, who's played by Denzel Washington, says, with all due respect, Your Honor, we don't live in this courtroom, do we? We don't live in a courtroom. We don't live in a church. We don't live in a Sunday school. We live out there in the world where lots and lots of things can happen to us, lots and lots of things can affect us. Abide in me, Jesus says, at all times. The 1964 Wilderness Act of the United States of America says that a wilderness is where people visit but do not remain. Nice place to visit, but you don't remain. Jesus is sort of a nice person to visit, but we don't remain. We have other things we have to get done, different things we have to do. It's said that the longer people uh, stay together, the more they look alike. And um, I think it really is true. My wife is uh, kind of doing her hair a little more naturally. She just kind of brushes it. And it, but her hair is curlier and curlier. She doesn't curl it. It's just curlier. And so I think it's pretty amazing. Uh, been together for quite a while. And uh, I'm beginning to look cuter and cuter. Uh, <laughs> Looking more and more alike, I guess. When we lived, used to live in Minnesota, a lot of uh, snowstorms out there in Minnesota, and a lot of snowmobiles and things. And there was one boy, I was walking back from the church one day, he was in our, the catechism class, and he asked me if I wanted to ride home. And I said, sure, the church, uh, that we lived about six blocks away. So I jumped on the motor, uh, the snowmobile with him, and he took off, and we went around this one corner, it was a, kind of a real sharp corner where we lived, and he went around there, and he went that way, and I went that way, he was blind. He thought, sure, he killed me. And this kid came running over to me, and, Pastor, 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 are you okay? And I was just laying there laughing, and it was perfectly fine. And he said, you were supposed to hold on. You never told me that. I didn't know you were supposed to hold on. Hold on, Jesus says, abide in me. Some of you remember John Walker. Anybody remember John Walker? He was an American who was arrested and charged with a high misdemeanor against the government because he fought with the Taliban in Afghanistan it was shortly after the war began. And here he was fighting on the Taliban side. He was charged with treason. They asked him in this interview, and this always struck me, they asked him in the interview how he could ever fight with them against his own people, his own country. And it was over a gradual period of time that he said, gradually my heart became attached to theirs. My heart became attached to theirs. Once our hearts get attached to something, no matter how crazy it is, it can lead us in directions that we really don't want to go. It's kind of like cell phones that are roaming. You know, you go into some places, we just came back from after being gone a couple days and going through the mountains of West Virginia. And my wife was on the phone at one point and lost, lost the signal going through those mountains. You're talking, all of a sudden the signal's gone. When we do not remain in Jesus, that's what happens. The folk singer Pete Seeger said, education is what remains after everything else we have learned has been forgotten. So what do we remember? This man had got into his car and he was absolutely shocked. There were, the steering wheel was gone. And so was the gas pedal, the brake pedal. As a matter of fact, the whole dashboard had been, it was gone. Until he finally figured out he was in the back seat. I got into a car once, uh, did anyone else ever do this? You know the little buttons you push on your key things to unlock the door? And I thought it was my car and I pushed the button and it unlocked the door. And I got in and I sat down, I put the key in, and it wouldn't turn the ignition. I'm thinking, what's wrong with the key? And it turned out it wasn't my car. 
Did you ever do that? But it worked on the door. But once I got in, it didn't turn the car over. I think something like that happens with Jesus, with us. We know he's in there somewhere, but we kind of forget. We forget to abide in him, even though he always abides in us. From the book of 1 John, which was read earlier in this service, there were these words. Those who say, I love God and hate their brothers and sisters are liars. It's pretty strong. For those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. Pretty strong stuff. It's always interesting to me whenever uh, people talk about this text, and I always, uh, here and there, I hear someone say, well, yeah, but you know, but I really don't hate people. I mean, I don't hate anyone. I mean, there are some people that I can't stand. There are some people that I put out of my mind. Some people, you know, I don't think about ever. Some people I want to pretend that they don't exist. Some people I want to vomit when I see them, but I don't really hate them. I don't know, call it whatever you want to. It seems like the same thing to me. Then. We abide in love, we abide in hate. What do we abide in? There are people who used to own slaves and they thought they abided in Jesus while they owned slaves. Could you own a slave and still abide in Christ? Is that possible? I don't think it is according to that lesson. Just semantics, maybe. It's just that H word. There was a guy who was on a stagecoach. There was a driver of a stagecoach and a guy riding a shotgun. And they were back in the Old West and they were riding along the uh, stage path. And they looked back in the distance and there was a bandit who was coming towards them, wanted to rob the stagecoach. So the driver tried to go faster and faster. He told the guy riding a shotgun to take a look and tell him when he was getting closer. And he looked, he said, well, how far away is he? He said, well, he's, he looks to be about this big, about an inch or so. And he said, well, how, how big does he look to be now? And he said, about two inches. And the driver drove a little bit more and fast as he could. And he said, well, how long, how does he look now? And he said, about four inches. And then about foot. He said, he's, he's almost on top of us. And the driver said, shoot, shoot. The guy said, I, I can't now. He said, I've known him since he was this big. <laughs> Jesus has known us for so long. As I always say, Jesus knows everything about us and loves us exactly as we are and wants to change everything about us. How is that possible to love someone exactly as you are and then want to change everything about you? That's what Christ wants. You can believe in something with not really investing yourself in it. You can believe that it's good to volunteer, but never volunteer. You can believe it's good to forgive, but never forgive. You can believe it's good to love, but never love. There's a man who died, he went to heaven, he was talking to God, and God, he asked God, he said, why in the world did you make my wife so beautiful? God said, well, I made her beautiful so to make you love her. And the guy said, well, why in the world did you make her such a good cook? And God said, well, I made her a good cook so you would love her. And the guy said, well, okay, but um, why in the world did you make her so she wasn't very bright? She's not very bright. And God said, to make her love you. <laughs> I like to do one for the ladies. <laughs> There's an ancient story that's told about Moses, and uh, it really is, it's a very, very old story. It's in some ancient Jewish writings, and sometimes it's attributed to Moses, sometimes not. In any case, here is Moses inside his tent, and along comes a beggar. And this beggar asks to, for some food. So Moses invites him in and sits down and 
just before they're going to eat, they have a small worship service, and they have a prayer. Now Moses is kind of looking at this guy in the corner of his eye while he's praying and having a worship service. He notices that this guy isn't paying attention at all. He's not praying, he's not taking part in the worship. Finally, the little worship is over, and Moses is so angry, he drives this guy out of the tent. How can he be so ungrateful to God? Now, later on that night, God came to Moses. God asked him, why did you drive that man out? And Moses said, well, he didn't praise you, Lord. And God said to Moses, I've had mercy on that ungrateful man for over 30 years. You couldn't put up with him for one night. For whatever reasons, we do not always abide in love. Partly because it's so difficult, I would guess. I used to think there was a magical age when people became mature. I didn't know when it was. I thought maybe it was 16. Then as I got older, to, closer to 16, I thought, well, maybe it's 18. Then I thought, well, maybe it's 21. I thought maybe it's 30. Of course, I came to find out that there is no magic wage of maturity. Some people never mature. The fact of the matter is that sometimes we never mature with the love of God. Sometimes we still act like we're little children. Sometimes we don't mean to slip away, we just do it. Sometimes we do it very intentionally. All I know is whenever we become disconnected from Jesus, everything else becomes disconnected too. When our kids were little, my wife would give them money for video games. I don't even know if they have video games like this around anymore. But they were, you know, they weren't very, uh, you know, little kids. So they thought they could go over and play a video game. With, they thought they were playing it. They really weren't. Anybody know what I'm talking about with those video games? So they're sitting there at these machines and they're, they're playing with the different things in there. They weren't really playing with them at all. They weren't really connected. And I think it sometimes happens to us, it happens to me. When we think we're connected with the love of Jesus. Some of those things that we cannot change in this life will still change us. There's a lot we can change including this. The love of Jesus Christ is always going to be in us. It's always going to be for us. There is nothing we can do to stop that. There's an incredible force, an incredible truth. It will always be there for us. It will always abide in us. We just need to remember to abide in it. Amen.
Let us rise and make confession of our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
enlivened in the resurrection of Jesus Christ, we pray for the life of the church, for those in need, and for all of God's creation. Holy, abiding God, breathe your love into your people. By your spirit, shape us to share your love with one another so that others see your love and come to know you. Hear us, O oh God. Spread your sheltering presence over all new things in your creation, plants sprouting out of soil and young animals growing stronger. Protect all that is fragile. Hear us, O oh God. Go forth with all missionaries in their work of serving others and sharing the good news of salvation we have in Christ. Make their work, work both welcomed and welcoming. Hear us, O oh God. Be a steadfast presence for migrant workers, refugees, and all who do not have permanent homes. Guide them, care for them, and give them security. Hear us, O oh God. Giving thanks for the saints who abide with you eternally, we ask you to open us to your presence in our midst until the day when you gather all people into your eternal presence. Hear us, O oh God. Abide with people who feel unloved, who deal with crisis, who struggle with illness, or who in any way need a special measure of your loving care in their lives today. We include in those prayers Joshua Gerken and Joshua Jenny, Ken Ludeman, Carolyn Lammy, Al Duquette, Linda, Roma Brown and Paul Long, Larry Zachrich and Robert Klassman. We pray for Paul Cousin, Jeff Warner, Rudy Eikhoff and Betty Middleton, for Richard Heckler, Walter Thompson, Pat Bainhop, Deb Gerken, and Alfred Preeby. We pray for Marjorie Downs, for Delma Bosselman, for Brent Leiter and Paul Panning, for C.A. Herman Campbell, Brent Thompson, and Ted, Hit Ted Titkemeyer, for Marsha, J.J. Dennis, Landon Zunk, and Arlita Panning, for Sandy Bosselman, Ed Pepper, Jamie Bosselman, and Kelly Troyer. We pray for Linda Hill, Bethany Wolf and Colleen Cable, for Lois Weekers, Evelyn Carlisle and JP, for Derek Morey, Don Susan Davis, Alice Leinenhoff, Crystal Garcia, and Lorna Bossom. We pray for Josh Badenhoff, Louisa Bevel, Andrew Williams, and Shirley Myers Fages, for KT, Betsy Mix, and West Holman and Alexa Jennings, for Michael Stover, Mary Brown, John and Dorothy Harms, and Emma Myers, for Pete Miller, Miranda Schenk, Ali Gray Small, and Jeff Brown, for Dave and Betty Meyer, Austin Lighthill, and Terry Mountcastle, for Ken Starkey, Roman Strom, Larry Ginneman, Fred Close, for Jay Bosselman, Bill Winsman, and Colleen Downer, Kurt Lambersight, Gary Kiefer, Robert Kadigan, and Lenhart Lang, for Bobby Hagen Rieger, Josh Bevel, Norma Strayer, and Linda Lofts, for Amy Rodenball, Betty Bernicke, Caden Michaelis, and Alice Overhouse, for Sandra Homer, Marlene Kreider, Tammy Porter, and Pastor Don Saul and Joe. For Ruth M. Eikhoff, Carol Berlin, Brennan, Lucas King, Dick Brown, Sarah Lenhart, Deb Schenk, and all those we name now in our hearts. Surround them with people who will show compassion. Hear us, O God. We pray, Heavenly Father, for those in our congregational family who will be celebrating their birthdays in this coming week. Those people include Ethan Fields, Cheryl Ritchie, Connie Williams, Daniel Olson, Lexis Long, Jack Walters, Ruth Ann Gray, Sue Cruz, Tyler Hayes, Noah Jordan, Donna Cruz, Lillian Grody, Grody Ben Len Leninger, Carol Castello, and Chris Moden. We pray in their anniversaries for Brad and Lisa Bajan, for Scott and Sarah Sonnenberg, and Chad and Jolene Brubaker. We also pray, Lord God, for those serving in military service from this our congregation and this our country, including Mike Dimache, Elizabeth Yoder, Tyler Hayes, and Austin Ogle. Be with them all and bless them and keep them in your heavenly grace. Trusting your abundant mercy, O God, we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray into your care. 
through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.